Hi guys, this is Jess. I know I sound really weird because I am getting over the crud. I picked up something I think a few weeks ago in Tennessee, so I haven't been on because I've had no voice. So <laughs> I've been really entertaining for my clients because I haven't been able to say a whole lot. Um, but we have Miss Shayla here. Hello, everybody. Everyone loves, everyone loves Shayla. Oh, thank you. And um, Shayla came in with some issues today. Yeah. So um, I figured why better to come on and see everybody, even though y'all have to listen to me sound funny. And I apologize in advance if I cough. I will try not to cough into my phone. Um, so what I've done is gone ahead and prepped her for her fill. And right now I am applying X-Bond. X-Bond is our new um, bonding gel. It's fantastic. I have using been using it for, I guess, three or four weeks now. And I am finding that clients that maybe had a little bit of lifting have nothing. Hi, Heather. Um, and so I, I'm really loving it. So you apply it just like base coat um, with the Luxio, but you can replace base coat with this. So any of your bonding gels that you've been using, and it goes on really smooth. So when you apply it, you're not looking for any bumps to the natural nail or anything. It's gonna go on really smooth. So go ahead and put it on. If anything gets on the skin like that, uh, always make sure you have your orange wood stick available. Wipe it out and she can go on in the light. So I'm gonna use natural pink. Um, you could also use um, balance. So I wouldn't use enhance with her you want to use something that's a little bit thicker viscosity um, for doing a fill on a nail that is this long that you need to create an arch in because if she doesn't have an arch in these she will break them they are um, they are much longer than your average um, 30 day manicure client so I'm gonna be using my oval 111 brush for um, doing her fill it works really well for sculpturing. So this is the nail that we have a problem with. So she has a little bit of a crack here. So what I've done is I've filed this down to where we're basically onto her natural nail right here. And on this one, I've removed her extension. So her extension was still here, but she had cracked it to about right here. You can see where the trauma is. Um, she had cracked it. So I went ahead and removed it. So what I'm going to be doing is first I'm going to create her um, arch and her extension. And when I sculpture a new set, I do my extensions in two steps. So I create my arch and my free edge with the first step. And then with the second step, I go through and I fill around the cuticle. And the reason is, is because if you leave these two areas free of product, you don't touch them, and you apply natural or balance onto the nail, your arch is going to stay put. It's not going to completely flatten out. Whereas if you cover the whole nail... Hi, Larray, your sister's Hi, watching. Hi, um, If you are putting the product and you cover the entire nail bed, then you're more at risk for your entire nail just totally flattening out. And to do this, go ahead and come out. I'm just going to check my length here. All right, I'm good. And I'm going to add a little bit right here where I remove some out of her stress area so that when I do the fill step it's going to go on much smoother. So I'm just filling in this area here because I filed all of this down because she had a crack. So you don't have to remove the entire nail. If you have someone that has a cracked nail, sometimes you would need to remove it. So this is running a little bit. It's a little bit warm because it is summer. So even my natural moves a little bit more in the summer. Okay, go on in. Um, you don't have to remove. You can come out if it gets warm at all. Okay, thank you. Um, hi. Oh, that's so nice. All right. I just wanted to see what's going on. Hi, Diane. Hi, Jessica. All right. Therapeutic watching application. All right. Well, hopefully this will be therapy without having to listen to my scratchy voice okay so for my fill application though I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my 106 um, this is my big flat brush that I love so much I'm gonna roll off onto the nail 
There's a little bit of red on the end of my brush, just from my last um, color that I did. I did Heritage Rouge, and I'm not really concerned with it, so I'm just gonna let it be. Um, this is gonna be covered with color anyway, so it's not a big deal. So after I push it around to the cuticle, I'm just laying my brush flat onto the nail and brushing down. As you can see, it goes on perfectly smooth. You don't have any bumps or anything like that. Again, get a nice, good amount. If you don't have enough, you're not gonna be able to do this as quickly and as efficiently. You're gonna to have to keep coming back, grabbing more gel, keep applying it. But if you can get it around to the cuticle, there's a little bubble there, I'm gonna grab that. Get it around to the cuticle, and then glide. I wanna leave the product in the arch area as much as possible. So I'm just barely touching it and then gliding over the nail. So if you look at it from the side, her arch is continuing to go down. It doesn't have to be a high arch. Her natural nail is adding a lot of strength. So for the most part, she doesn't crack them too often. I shortened them quite a bit. Um, so they cracked a little bit because she did have quite a bit more length on these. But she knows my rule. I definitely do. And so do the rest of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, Barbara. Hi, Cher. So what I do with my clients that wear them really long is... Um, I'm going to go ahead and let those go in. I'm going to switch back and forth. Oh, thanks, Cher. All right, so I'm going to start with this nail here. Um, typically, I'll do two nails at a time when I'm dealing with nails this long because of the warmth. Um, someone's giggling. My sister commented, boo, because she knows the rules. <laughs> yeah. So, Lorraine, who is in, in our chat room right now, she wears hers the longest, so if you've seen my videos of some long extensions, that is lovely, Larray. Um, But yeah, I will shorten nails up a bit if people are breaking them too much. So it really is about balancing your nail length and your lifestyle. So if your lifestyle is such that your nails are breaking too much, then I will shorten them a bit. So um, I shorten them about a month's grow out on her, but if she comes back next time and there is no breakage or cracking like crazy then she gets to keep going longer so <laughs> i just on probation. she's on probation <laughs> but it's a slight probation they're still quite a bit longer than most clients yes. wear yes, yes. um but it's it's for the sake of my clients and also for my sanity Amen. because we need a little bit of both in the world um but if clients are wearing them so long that they're breaking them all the time you have to be kind of the boss and be in charge <laughs> a little bit and uh, it's important. So, I mean, if, if someone can handle super long nails and they never break them, cool. They can wear them as long as they want. If they're coming in with nails that are too long, too broken all the time, it's not going to work. Um, and so I have had to, unfortunately, fire a client who got really mad at me because I enforced this rule. And I said, you've got to go shorter. You can't. She's wearing stilettos. And she's breaking them a couple each week. And I said... You're, you have four children under the age of five. You cannot wear your nails this long. It's not working for your lifestyle. Because um, she also didn't want to pay for my time to do the breaks. And so I had to I had to say goodbye. I said, I'm sorry. You can find another nail tech that can handle that. But I can't keep doing the game. So it's not good for your fingers. It's not good for your nails. Ms. So. Tadia would like to know, can you please repeat which gel you're using? I am using natural pink. There you go. Right there. I don't know. Maybe you can't even read it because of the reflection. But... Natural Pink. Um, it is from our classic UV line. It's my favorite. I've had it for a million years. And yes, my Heather, my nails are really long right now. So if I start breaking them, I'll shorten them. And I'll tell you. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> she says, how often do you do yours? Um, four to five weeks in between. I'm really lazy. <laughs> I don't want to do mine that often. Um, I did them in Vegas for the Vegas show. Um, and that was... At the beginning of January? No, July. Was that beginning of July or the end of June? I don't even remember. I think it was the end of June. I'm just making sure that there's no gel kind of making a bump in the front just because as the nail sits down like this, gravity pulls it down. So I hold it up and I'm checking my line of light and pulling anything off that might have made a bump in the front. Just in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Anyway, I did mine in the beginning of June. Um, no, the end of, end of June. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Hi, Christy. Um, the end of June, I did them in Vegas. And then when I went to Tennessee a few weeks later, I did the white on top. So I did them kind of in two steps. But I like edge nails. Um, one of the girls from the profile, one of the profile girls saw me and 
Tennessee. She's like, are you bringing Edge back? I'm like, sure. <laughs> I'm like, I like the shape. My fingers are crazy short. And so I don't look good with stilettos. It just looks weird. But Edge kind of elongate my fingers before it starts to point. So they look okay, Edge. But I, I don't like stilettos on me at all. So I'm playing with the gel a little bit more on here. But realistically, it's going to be so much faster for me to just finish file this nail a little bit. You know, I, I don't like to finish file. But I do always finish file new extensions, especially this length. Um, so I'm just going to finish file these two nails. The other ones are going to be smooth enough that I can just go straight into color. But I will show you guys how I finish file these without making too much of a mess of the rest. So this one, because it's a full extension, I am going to get a bit more of an arch in here. Hey, I haven't had a hack long once since I started talking. All right, and then see this little crack or this corner right here? You guys need to make sure that you're always getting enough product in that corner. People get cracks there, and if you don't get a product there, you're going to see a crack in days, not weeks, not months, days, because people, that is your stress area um, where you've got your gel meeting your natural nail. So make sure you get enough product in there so when you file, you don't end up with some craziness going on. Oh, Heather, we could teach you edge shape. That's what classes are for and the retreat and fun things like that. I'm sure that if you go up to High Road up in the Northeast, I think you're in the Northeast. I'm pretty sure. I think there's in Buffalo. You're in Buffalo and High Road in Buffalo. You could learn edge right there. I don't do edge on any clients. Um, it would require a total full set and more time and nobody wants that. Nobody wants to pay for that. It's a long time. It's a lot of product, but so when but it is fun to run into people that are like, what is that shape? And they want to know and they want to see it. And oh, that's so cool. I'm like, yeah, nobody gets it. <laughs> it's a nail tech shape. It's for nail techs, my nail techs. But um, I could if someone really wanted it. Now that I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's make sure. So I'm just checking my line of light. Again, it going, it's going on really nice and smooth. This is why I love natural. So, Cunman, Minneapolis. Minnesota. My husband has a... Oh, I'm not done yet. I'm on the wrong hand right Okay, now. I'm sorry. That's okay. Normally, <laughs> I start with this hand, but because I had a repair, I'm a finger off, and I would have left this thumb not filled, and then I would have looked at it and been like, oh, there's no fill right there. So, again, pillowing. This is called pillowing around the cuticle. And then I didn't even get enough product, so I'm going to grab some more. And this is what happens when you don't get enough. Because before I dab this, I would know that I would end up pulling all of that fill. She had had a little hairline lift right there. I got that out. Minnesota. Oh, I'd have to go, like, in the spring or fall, though, because that's... um. Too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter. I'm in Seattle, folks. We're very mild here. It's like 80 degrees all summer and beautiful and 55 in the winter. Don't tell them. I know. We're already like way too crowded. People find out and they're like, oh, I want to move there. And that's why housing prices are crazy. Don't try to move here right now. I have clients selling their houses for $100,000 over the ask right now. It's crazy. $100,000 over ask. I bet you could buy a house in Minnesota for that price. All right. What brush is that? This was the 106 that I used. This is the one that I use on, like, everything. I got a fresh new one. Look how pretty it is. Normally, it gets really starting. It starts going crazy like that. That's how it looks when it's old. And this one's getting a little bit beat up. Um, so I, I got a new one. They're only $8.95, guys, on a website. So when you decide you want a new one, they're only $8.95. So I'm going to go straight into color. And I'm not even going to tell you what color. I'm going to see if anyone out there knows what color this is because it is a favorite because that's a fun game. Let's see. Shayla, you'll have to tell me if anyone spurts okay. anything out. I'm focused. This is a Luxio color. Mm. 
We got an almondine. We got a blush. Oh, this game not, is popping. Not almondine and not blush. We got another blusher. No. Blush is sheer and much lighter than this. Nice guess, though. Blush is very, very, very popular. I use I see it. an eternity. Nope. Eternity is a rosy color. I'm guessing. I don't know names. I hear Hush, Forever. Oh, this no, is not for, Hush, somebody not Somebody got it, Miss Kim Irvine. Oh, Miss Kim Irvine. Ding, 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 ding. Sophisto it is. Very nice. So, um, this is Sophisto, which is a really nice, darker nude. Go ahead, Kim. Yeah, Kim up in the Northeast. Good job, good job. Ten points. Right on. All right, so gonna go ahead with one coat there. So now we're gonna focus on these two nails that are under fill. So I don't have to worry about the dust getting on the other ones, they're in the light, but I need to do these two. So what I do is I ask my clients to tuck the other nails under. Uh -oh. And what they're gonna do is if she tucks these down, they're not gonna get covered in dust. And so I can remove the tack off of these two nails. And I'm just going to finish file these a bit. This one's not too bad, but there is a little bit of a bump in there, and I am a little picky for that. So I'm just going to glide my file over. So I want to make sure my nail isn't too flat and I still have an arch in there and I want to come back next time and be like I did it again she knows me well so that should be good so I'm gonna go ahead and take this one now and I will take my e-file real quick and I'm just gonna go along the front and down the sides a little bit. I'm a big hand filer, and so I won't e-file a lot. Typically, it's just gonna be perimeter when it comes to shaping with my um, with my file. I typically am gonna do it by hand. Get the cuticle nicely beveled, nice and thin. And then roll up the side walls so they're coming straight out. Straight out or slightly tapered. And the reason I slightly taper is because when you are doing a square nail and you add your color and your glitter and stuff, if it doesn't start out slightly tapered, it's going to end up looking slightly flared because you're adding product to it. So I tend to taper a little bit um, to start with, and that way after you've added your color and your glitter and your gloss, and then you end up with a, um, a square nail that's not flared out. So this has a nice C curve. Let's see if I can get that in there without breaking your finger. Can that's you okay. See that? <laughs> it's a pretty decent C curve for a standard salon nail there. And that wasn't pinching, I didn't pinch or anything like that. That was just form fit. Hi, Monique. You should have got your stuff today, dear, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. All right, I'm going to check length. Go ahead and give me that other finger, please. So we're just going to make sure that the length is lining up here. It was a little bit long, just a hairline. Go ahead and put that back in so it doesn't get dusty. I'm just going to remove just a little bit. And then looking at it again from down the barrel. Going to glide right over the free edge, thinning out the free edge, tapering in, making sure I do my arch here all right so once my shape is in order
All right. So the reason I just push back the cuticle is sometimes when I'm finished filing, I feel like dust or debris gets in there. And when you go to apply your color, you end up with um, dust and debris in your color. And then as it grows out, it's not as lovely. Or it also will let you know if you have any product in there because you should have nothing there. That's where your, what's where your color is going to fall. All right. So go ahead and open up. So as you can see, she's got a little tiny bit of dust on there, but for the most part, completely dust free, which means that we can just go straight into Spisto. So even if there was a little bit of dust, I would just put Spisto right over it. Dust is not gonna cause you problems. It's all made of gel. So gonna apply this. Now there's a little bit hanging down here from product or whatnot. That's fine. I'm gonna hit all of the nails around the free edge at the very end. So it's going to help me refine any shaping um, or anything like that that I might need to do after. All right. If you hear any background conversation, Jessica's here with her client now. So they're in the other room doing nails too. So it was fun being in... Um, Vegas. Shout out to a couple of my friends. Allie got to win her uh, second or third. I don't remember. She's already got two. Nail Pro Cup Award. She's a superstar. And um, I made top ten, which is pretty awesome for my first year out there doing the crazy. I learned a lot all year. I have a lot to learn. I have a huge class in October. It's at the beginning of the retreat week, so for those not coming to the retreat, or if you want to have a serious nail week, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that week, I have a class that I'm hosting at my shop for three days. Um, I do have the same nails, Tracy. I will have the same nails on for a while. Um, and... Uh, what was I saying? Oh, the class. <laughs> so from Sweden, we have a huge winner. Uh, Madeline Wolf is coming to teach for three days. So if you are wanting to have an intensive training where your nails will look so amazing after a few days, that is the way to do it because there's nothing else going on. It's just all um, very intensive training. All right. So we're talking about like at an ankle like that? Sure. Or like a swoosh, swoosh. like that? A swoosh. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about what's going on. We are going to be doing stuff with this lovely glitter, which is from Sparkles. Um, I carry it. I don't have it on the website, but if you are shopping and you're like, I need that glitter, you can let me know. I do have some in stock. I have it when people come shop here. But So my second coat, I'm not going to apply it on the entire nail because when I put the glitter down, I'm adding bulk. And when I put the top coat on, I'm adding bulk. So the last thing I need is two coats of nude on an area where you're already adding bulk. So, hello. So I'm not gonna put it where I'm gonna put the glitter and I'm actually going to do my swoosh of where the glitter is gonna go with my brush and it's gonna make it way easier when I go to apply the glitter. And go down a little bit more there. Thanks, Christy. Christy actually modeled for me. She was my bling on model in Vegas. I loved them, but they didn't even get top 10. Live and learn. They wanted little dragonflies. <laughs> and I did not do little dragonflies. All right, where did my 106 brush? I did. <coughs> Excuse me. And see, there's a little, little dust on there. No problem. Just wipe it off. And continue. Sorry, I'm out of frame. All right, so now I'm gonna make swoosh. I'm gonna take the same 106 brush that I did, and I'm going to, like that? Yep. Okay, so this is what we call it the swoosh, um, for lack of better words. It's basically like half French, half angle in a way. So I'm removing is what I'm doing right now. So I'm coming down, and I'm removing color 
Alright, that one's a little bit high. Oh, you love the bears. Well, it's not, it's it's a refuge for them. So what Christy just said, she loved the bears. I did a live video um, on Saturday, Sunday. I was at the, um, I don't think you saw it. Mm -mm. I was at the Olympic Game Farm, which was actually Walt Disney um, helped create this sanctuary for retired bears and animals that were in the acting business mm. and those ancestors of those bears and elk and deer and wolves and all kinds of things live at this game farm and it is like jurassic park because <laughs> you are in your own vehicle and you have to stay in your vehicle you're not allowed to get out because they are walking around and um granted the bears are behind some fencing and stuff, but they were like happy. They're getting fed and people are throwing bread at them because they give you, there's a wheat bread that they sell. If you'd like to feed them, you can throw it over their fence. And so you can throw it to them. Um, and they are so cute. Mm -hmm. They had a pretty big area to walk around, much better than most, <coughs> um, excuse me, <clears throat> much better than most standard um, zoos and things like that. And then there was like elk and deer and like they come up to your car and the elk was so big and the buffalo was so big. I was freaking out. It. it was crazy. So again, I'm gonna take my wipe and I'm just, there's a little bit of nail prep on here. And I'm coming down and I'm gonna have to squoosh opposite direction now. Come back a little bit. That's right. Come down and swoosh. My swooshing is not as good at this angle, but it'll look good in the end. All right, I'm going in. So now what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm just gonna use some top gloss. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can use top gloss, you can use um, options. I wouldn't recommend using shine on because you're gonna be top glossing over this and you want a tacky layer. Um, although I'm pretty much gonna be covering that up because now we're going to be putting all of our glitter in this. And the top coat I'm going to use on this is not going to be Luxio Gloss. When I'm all done, I'm going to be using, um, hi Dandelion, <clears throat> I'm going to be using Options Clear for a top coat. And the reason is, is because Options Clear goes on slightly thicker and it's going to encapsulate the glitter better and give us minimal um, bumpiness because... We try not to make bumpy nails, and I don't want a finished file. So in order to do that, you need to use a top coat that's gonna cover up all this glitter and still look smooth without finished filing. Because I don't got time for that. These are real salon nails. I still have one more person coming in after her. So I do not have the luxury of taking three hours for a fill. So we do them in real world, in real time. So pretty color, this rose. 
And so I'm just tapping it into my top gloss, trying to lay down the glitters. And I'm just going to look down and make sure there's nothing sticking up. If it's all good, go to the next one. Do you approve, my dear? Yes, I do. Okay. It's always good to make sure clients are happy. <laughs> so you just start doing it, and they were like, um... Yeah, I know you just did this whole hand and you just took 10 minutes moving every tiny little piece of glitter into place, but I think I want to change the color. <laughs> and then I might have to say nasty things under my breath. <laughs> That's why I always ask. One nail. Check it out. <clears throat> Good. So just press your glitters into place. And it's going to take a little bit of time to get them on where I want them. A little bit of time. But it always takes me longer when I'm chatting my way through it. <laughs> not invited to the party. So after I do these four, I'm going to go ahead and freeze it. And the reason is, is because when you rotate your thumb, some of these glitters are sticking out. So there's like six tall. It's not supposed to be six tall. Um, when you rotate to do your thumb, because this is done on just top gloss, gravity can pull it down. So I'm going to freeze it for a few seconds after I finish her pinky and that's going to prevent it from moving on me. picked a really fun glitter. <laughs> I say sarcastically. <laughs> well, I love the woman who picked it. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> well, it goes really well with this color, which is why I like it. But it, it does like to pile itself up a little bit more than I yeah. would appreciate. But you really never know how a glitter is going to behave until you want it to do one thing and then it has a mind of its own. Alright, so after she freezes this, I'm going to go ahead and do the options clear so you guys can see, and then I'll sign off so you don't have to sit and watch, but go ahead and freeze that for a second. So you can use options clear or crystal clear. I like to use clear. There's a little bit of flexibility in it, which I think helps add a lot of strength. Um, so it comes in a little pot like this or a refill tube to refill this little pot. So it's a little bit thicker viscosity. Um, if you hold it on the brush, you can see that it's not really dripping off the brush. It glides over really nicely. So I'm going to grab a bit onto the nail, and I'm going to float it down. You want to see it has little bubbles in it. It's because it's a really it's much thinner than like a a gel that would be like for building, but it's still just a thick enough viscosity that you can get a nice coverage onto your glitter and not have bumpy nails. So I'm going to go around the edges and that's going to take any bumps off the edges. But if you check out that line of light, you guys can see that it doesn't have a ton of bumps on that glitter. And I'll typically do two when it's a nail this length. If they're shorter nails, I'll do all four and then freeze it and then do the fifth. But with this length, it takes me a little bit longer to apply it. 
So I'm going to freeze it after two nails. So it's a little bit different than applying a gloss with um, a bottle, but you're floating it over your glitter. And it's gonna have the gloss built right in. So it's got a little bit of strength. This is also a gel that's excellent for like a clear overlay. If you have a customer that just wants a clear overlay and you can't talk them into any color at all, they need some flexibility, this is gonna be that gel. And it's not gonna crack and you can do a really, really thin overlay. Okay, so you can see the line of light. It's really smooth on there. It's really smooth here. So at the end, all I'm gonna have to do is file the edges. Actually, I can go ahead and do the other two nails too. We don't have to skip around at all. It's not moving that much on me. You never know with the summer, you know, gel is very temperature sensitive. And the warmer a salon is, the runnier the gel is gonna get, which can be to your benefit or it can be a total pain. So if you want your gel to be runnier, you can do something like putting it on some heat on a paraffin dip container or a mug warmer for a very short amount of time because it gets hot. I know from uh, experience on that one. Um, yeah. Um, I wanted bling on to be a little bit runnier one day and I forgot it on there a little long and I was like, whoo, that's a hot jar. Still worked really well, but man, it was runny. So I had to wait for that to cool and kind of set back up to the right temperature. So float over your glitter. It'll encapsulate it. If you have a low spot, after you have a wet slick layer, you can do that. Drizzle it right on top and it'll melt into it and you'll end up with a nice smooth nail. Check all of them before you go in the light. Make sure there's no glitter sticking out or there's nothing running. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Running too far. <coughs> excuse me. All right, in the light she goes. I'm going to sign off because now I'm going to start coughing again. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me and Shayla. Bye. Bye.